Hello, this week we're going to do a nice little introduction to the ear, not just this bit of the ear, the whole ear. I say the whole ear, what I'm really going to do is explain external ear, middle ear, inner ear. We'll take each part in turn, talk about the functions, and kind of uh, we'll talk about the separations between each part because it's easy to get confused about well which is the inner ear which is the middle ear right the external ear then is largely well that's the easy bit it's the external ear it's this bit this the oracle so this is a load of um, elastic cartilage covered with skin and um, you might consider that it's involved in collecting the sound waves and directing them into this tube here, this is the external auditory meatus, or the external acoustic meatus, two names, same thing. So that is also part of the external ear. If I get a skull, skull, so that's it here. So here's the temporomandibular joint where the mandible articulates and right here is the external auditory meatus. This is the temporal bone here. So that is also part of the external ear. We haven't got to the middle ear yet. So as we continue down the external auditory meatus, we meet a barrier. This is the tympanic membrane here. So the tympanic membrane then is the boundary between the external ear and the middle ear. The middle ear is on the other side of the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane is collecting all those vibrations in the air, all those pressure waves down this tube and the tympanic membrane will then vibrate. So the external ear is taking those vibrations and transferring them to the middle ear. Okay, so what's the middle ear then? Well, the middle ear is deep to the tympanic membrane. It's an air filled space and it links to, see this tube here? This is the pharyngotympanic tube. The pharyngotympanic tube or auditory tube or eustachian tube, three names for the same thing. This links to inside your nasal cavity, opens up here. So the middle ear is between the tympanic membrane and the pharyngotympanic tube is this space. And inside that space, that's where we find the ossicles of the ear, the tiny little bones of the ear, um, some of which you can see on here. The ossicles transmit the vibrations from the tympanic membrane. So these movements, these, these bones are all linked together and hinged. They transmit those vibrations to the cochlea. The cochlea is not part of the middle ear. We'll get to that in a minute. And what it does, what, what those movements of the ossicles do is they, they increase the force but decrease the amplitude of those vibrations. We've done this in much more detail elsewhere. You can find those videos. What else do we find in here? There are a few structures running through here. I mean, they're, they're hard to see, but two major ones we might talk about. Major, difficult to say major when you talk about the smallest muscle in the body, but we have stapedius and we have tensor tympani in here. Um, stapedius attaches to the stapes bone and kind of stops it from vibrating too far, too much, kind of dampens it a little bit. And the tensor tympani muscle um, tenses the tympanic membrane kind of through the malleus bone. Um, but it, again, it dampens, it, 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 it um, stops loud sounds from being too loud, kind of. We've talked about this more elsewhere. So that's the middle ear. The middle ear is this air-filled space with those ossicles in it deep to the tympanic membrane, leading to the pharyngotympanic tube. And it's the pharyngotympanic tube that allows air into the middle ear and allows that pressure inside the middle ear to be equalized to the pressure outside the body through the nasal cavity. Okay, so inner ear, right, so you see this bone here. If we take that bone off, we can see structures of the inner ear. So the structures of the inner ear are inside the bone, inside the bony labyrinth as it gets called. The structures of the inner ear are 
the cochlea, the semicircular canals and the vestibular apparatus. So the semicircular canals are part of that, but there are a couple of other bits in there. So these are the structures of the inner ear and they're embedded in bones. So that's the difference between external, middle and inner ear parts. These structures of the inner ear are um, in fluid filled spaces and the cochlea is shaped like a snail and the semicircular canals are shaped like semicircular canals and then we have a couple of other spaces down here um, and in those fluid filled spaces essentially what we have are um, hair cells which are specialized neurons with those hairs embedded in membranes and as either sound waves move the fluid or movements of the head move the fluid those hair cells are deflected and the deflection of those hair cells causes the creation of action potentials that run through the nerve to the brain and the brain perceives movements, changes in balance, sound and so on through the vestibular cochlear nerve. If we go back to the skull again and we take the oh, skull cap off, so anterior looking in here, in this petrous part of the temporal bone, in that rocky bit here on either side, if we were to dig away the bone there, that's where we'd find the inner ear. It's, it's deep, it's bony, it's a bony labyrinth, it's very inner. And that's it. Hopefully, you're now confident in the, part, the parts of the ear. So the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. And now you can move on and watch all of those other videos about all of those bits in way more detail uh, if you choose to good luck okay right introduction to the ear done i was asked to do that by an ent surgeon so it must be useful to somebody see you next week